Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So I've been thinking for a while about paper negatives in cameras and using them for landscape photography. And I've been doing this a lot over the last several decades. And one of the things that you find is because paper negatives are blue and UV sensitive primarily, a little bit of green sensitivity, but they aren't panchromatic, they're not red sensitive, the sky gets overexposed in order to get the landscape part of an image properly exposed. The landscape has a lot less blue and UV in it than the sky does. So an example would be a pinhole camera exposure of a landscape that would normally give you about a require a minute exposure time, let's say, might only require 10 or 15 seconds to get the sky properly exposed. In other words, a, a darker shade of gray with some light fluffy clouds, for instance. But if you expose the image for the landscape part, the sky is typically blown out so there's no detail in it. And this uh, effect was really noticeable in a lot of 19th century landscape photography in the American West where they were still using orthochromatic emulsions which were blue and UV sensitive primarily and weren't red sensitive. And you'll see this often in those early photos where the sky is very white with no detail. It almost looks like it's a bright cloudy sky all the time. You don't have that dramatic dark sky that you see later on in the 20th century landscape images when we had panchromatic emulsions. This is what I call the 19th century tonal range or look, but I'm interested to see if I can use paper negatives for landscape photography. In other words, a photography that has sky in it and the landscape, essentially getting some detail in the sky other than just blown out white. And the thought that struck me a few months ago was when you have a shutter that's in front of your lens, and I'm speaking or I'm thinking really about a pinhole camera now, but when you have your shutter in front of the lens, and if it's the kind of a shutter that pulls up, when you first pull the shutter, the first part of the image that begins to expose onto the paper comes from the landscape, from the bottom part of the scene. And as you pull the shutter up higher, more and more of the middle part, and then finally when the shutter is pulled completely up, the upper part, which would be the sky, is now exposed. And it got me thinking, what if we could do a slow shutter pull? That is, we pull the shutter part way up initially just to expose the landscape part without the sky, and then at some later point in the exposure, we pull it up the rest of the way and give the sky part a much shorter exposure so that uh, the two are balanced and you have detail in both. And that's what I've been thinking about, how to do that. And uh, I need a camera that has a view screen that I can kind of test uh, the, you know, the alignment of it. Uh, I'd like to try this initially on a pinhole camera. And so uh, I'm going to be using this wooden camera right here, this 4x5 wooden pinhole camera with a removable view screen. It uses 4x5 right-way sheet film holders. So it has a view screen on the back that's removable and the film holder goes in place of it. And then on the front, it has uh, an internal shutter, which you might see right there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the internal shutter open and I'm going to fix an external shutter to the front. Okay, the front of this camera, I have these two machine screws that unscrew this top plate, the front plate, like a window. And then there's a recess in here and I have a pinhole. So that'll go in there and this plate goes over for a standard for the pinhole itself for our exposure. But then you can put this viewing hole in here and this is about a four millimeter roughly diameter hole and a piece of brass so then uh, i decided of course i want to have a shutter on the front of this camera instead of the rear shutter and so what i've built is a multi-layer shutter out of thin cardboard so i have a front and a back window that have holes drilled to or cut to line up with the screw holes like that Okay, so I have the sandwich glued with glue stick, and I've the piece I cut out of the middle, 
to make the opening for the shutter, I've used it to clean out the slot so it's not sticky with glue. And now what I need to do is make a longer shutter, one that's long enough to have a handle. What I'm interested in is to see whether this sandwich, the thickness of it, is going to vignette in the corners. So here's a way of testing for that. Okay, so I'm going to hold this up to the sun, and you can see in the very corner the circle is nice and full. If it was vignetting, you would see part of the disc cut off like that or whatever. So we're going to check that corner, and then looks like the disc is nice and full. And check the other corner, which it looks good. It's not vignetting. And then finally this corner here. So it looks like my little sandwich of cardboard to make my shutter will be sufficiently wide of an opening to not vignette the corners. So it might be obvious to you that the uh, closer to the pinhole that the shutter is, the smaller the movement I'm going to need in order to go from fully open to partly open. And also the fuzzier the line will be if it's partly open. Whereas the further away, the further in front of, the pinhole the shutter is, then the more movement I have to make a fine adjustment, but the edge of the shutter, the shadow of it, is going to be sharper. Uh, so there is a balance between how fine of an adjustment you need versus how sharp of an edge you don't want. So let me go test this and see uh, what it looks like. Well, okay, I'm out here on the edge of Albuquerque, uh, far northeast heights. Sandias are in the distance. It's not a perfectly level horizon, of course, but it's just going to have to do. So let's see, we have the camera set up here on the Bogan tripod. So I'm going to guess that my normal exposure is going to be about 45 seconds. And uh, I have another one I'll do for about a minute. So for 45 seconds, I think I'm going to give the sky exposure about, let's say, 15 seconds. Okay, so I have two paper negatives to develop in my chemistry here, which should be all about ready. We'll see what happens. The big uh, issue here, though, is obviously the uh, my intended horizon effect here was not done very well. This horizon line should have been right down here at the base of the mountain. And part of the problem was because when I went out to do this, I forgot to bring the four millimeter viewing pinhole so I could only estimate the position of this versus the composition on the camera using only the viewing dots on the side of the camera. So my, my composition on the camera was very approximate. And because I only had the small pinhole, I couldn't see the image on the ground glass. The big problem here, though, is really the edge of the shadow here of the shutter is too sharp. It, it, the zone of fuzziness is not wide enough. And so I need this shutter to be closer to the pinhole in order to get a fuzzier, wider zone of graduation of tones to make it look more natural. Now, as far as my sky exposure, it was 15 seconds, and it looks to me like it was pretty decent. Uh, the gray right here in the center is just a little bit lighter than the mountain tones here, and on this one it is a little lighter perhaps, but I think that's a pretty decent exposure because uh, you can see what the sky would have been without any dodging. It's going to be in the negative, almost solid black, which would be almost pure white in the positive. So I certainly decreased the density of the of the sky, which was my intention. So, and you can see what paper white looks like. So I think getting a middle, somewhere a middle grayish kind of looking sky looks pretty decent to me. And you can see with this pinhole camera also there's a light fall off toward the corners as you can see the middle here is darker than up here in the corners so uh, yeah nice effect I think it's gonna work it's just I need this transition zone the shadow of the edge of the shutter to be much closer to the pinhole so this transition area is wider and then I can make a more natural looking horizon uh, effect okay so um, I was comparing both of these hole plates the pinhole and the viewing hole and I noticed the pinhole wasn't really centered onto the wooden piece as well it was off to the side 
And so uh, the pinhole is actually mounted with a piece of gaffer's tape that has a tiny hole snipped in it. So I've repositioned the gaffer's tape so now the pinhole and the viewing hole are are nice and concentric and that's what I want. So now when I use the viewing hole and I get the horizon set up to it, it should be more accurate to the pinhole itself. But there's another issue that I need to figure out which is how to make my artificial horizon shutter closer to the pinhole and I think I have an idea. Okay, so the way these mount is um, there's a recess built into this frame and the viewing hole or the pinhole fits in like that and then there is the top plate that fits over it with the machine screws that hold it down. Um, so what I think I'm going to do, it's a real simple solution, is in the case of the pinhole, instead of mounting it like this, I'm simply going to flip it over and put it in like this. And what this means is that my cardboard um, shutter it's going to be much, much closer to the pinhole now instead of being recessed by a quarter of an inch. And so here you can see that uh, the pinhole now is going to be just one cardboard thickness away from the shutter and it should give me a much blurrier transition line. Well, finally, I think I have some results here that I can study and see a little bit more how this works. So uh, the first image I'm showing here is the straight exposure, this is basically the front of my house pointing toward the north. You can see there's no masking of the sky. This is just a straight exposure. It's a 30 second exposure. Okay, the next one, the same 30 second exposure with the top half of the image masked off by my cardboard shutter here. And you can see the relative sharpness or dullness of the masking here as it's only one cardboard thickness away from the pinhole approximately. And then the third image is going to be another 30 second exposure overall with 15 seconds on the sky portion. And you can see now comparing between uh, no masking of the sky versus one stop of masking of the sky, you can see a dramatic difference in the tones of the sky part. You can see the the transition point between the bottom part and the top part is relatively well concealed. It's, it's kind of hard to see that unless you had the other images to compare it against, which I think is interesting. So it does have some effect, apparently, this technique of slow shutter pulls or dodging the sky portion during your exposure. I think it's interesting. However, the problem with it I think that makes it difficult to, to do, to achieve, is in order to get that transition line gradual, you have to have your shutter really close to the pinhole in order for it to be out of focus sufficiently. But that also means that the vertical position of the shutter is very, very fine. The, in other words, the amount of adjustment you need is really small vertically. It's kind of a two-edged sword. If you move the shutter further in front of the pinhole, you'll get an, a better control over your vertical position. You can adjust it easier but the shadow then becomes much sharper. I think this technique might actually work better with a glass lens where when you put the shutter close into the lens you could have a very gradual smooth transition and still have the vertical position, the vertical movement of the shutter be easy to do, not so fine, not so very small, like almost the size of the pinhole in terms of the amount of vertical height you have to move it, as is the case here. So it's an experimental technique. Uh, I think it deserves more practice, more experimenting to see if I can make it any better, but I'd like to hear you guys' opinion about it. Please share your thoughts down below about these uh, masking off the sky partly during uh, landscape exposures with paper negatives. Well, as always, stay safe, stay well, stay creative. Bye-bye for now.